Hey, I'm Trip Coleman, and I was the director of Murder Ballad. Hi, I'm Justin Levine, and I was the uh, music director and uh, arranger and orchestrator of Murder Ballad. Hi, my name is Rebecca Naomi Jones, and I was the narrator in Murder Ballad. And I am very excited to watch this B-roll with you all. But first, a brief message from my best friend, Will Swenson. <laughs> my name is Will Swenson, and... Um... I played the role of Tom in the, the Murder Ballad skit. Thank you for being interested in watching some interesting uh, snippets of the Murder Ballad show. Um, we all had a terrific time doing it. The things that come to mind for me, um, the first one is hilarious because it was received so well and people generally just loved the show. But one night as I was singing my song, Sarah, kind of walking through the tables and singing about my, my long lost love, I kind of, sat on the edge of one of the tables and in between my lyric an older gentleman whispered this is terrible <laughs> and it's one of my favorite theater memories ever so that was hilarious um the other was uh one other is um towards the end of the show i sang this really creepy ballad where i've been stalking sarah and i would i would kind of sneak down this stairway and kind of just sit in the darkness and the song started in the clear, just with no music or whatever, and I wasn't lit either, so the audience didn't know I was there. And I would just start the song with like, wherever you go, or whatever the lyric was. And it was pretty common about 50% of the time that the people right next to me would jump and jolt and or, or shush me like someone in the audience was talking. So that was fun. Um, and then the third thing that I can remember just was a general feeling of wanting a drink because we spent the whole night pretending to drink whiskey and it was just water or tea or whatever. Um, so I think as a whole, probably that's the most I've drunk with a cast because at the end of the show, we were just like, okay, we need, we just need a little, little something, something. So the, those are my quick memories about doing Murder Ballad. We all had a blast. I, I I've rarely worked with such an incredibly talented group of people in all incarnations of that show. And I hope you enjoy watching some of these snippets. Maybe I will look at them as well and, and go, oh, that wasn't quite right. Anyway, uh, much love. Take care. We light a match it starts from a spark. We let the fire catch illuminate the song is so good. I love it so much. You crushed its performance. Singer stands to sing. We're quiet listening from the Blue Ridge Mountain. Little, little Doug Barone choreography right there. <gasps> I loved that choreography. So good. There's always a killer. So logically, someone has to die. We sing so much acting on the pool table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at that lighting. We're all in different spaces, but it's like connected. Gorgeous. Grace of God go I. I'll just take that baseball bat. It's going to be important later. <laughs> Sexy time. He thought he'd act, he played guitar. Some kind of art, they'd both be stars. You're brighter than the sun. This was always giving me so much agita, like as a director, having two performers so close to each other in a space where everything is, you know, so the audience is all, all around. I just was like, oh my God, are people gonna be able to see? Oh yeah, I remember that. years it became clear with close inspection no one's perfection new york's got four million women for me to lose myself in i mean and wills henley is all about his packs so. it is yeah it's like the dexter kill shirt but hot totally <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's was extra kill sure was kind of hot too. Yeah. <laughs> These audience members just ducking. <laughs> yeah. Walking home 
from NYU, bleak of Broadway Bowery. When she collided into him, no pardon me, all sass and gin. What's your name? Sarah, kiss me. <laughs> nice to meet you, Sarah. I'm Michael. Shut up and kiss me, Michael! Slow down, baby, quiet your mind. What you doing, missing nothing outside? You really can see like how committed all these performances are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all really, um, it really did flow. Plan. In constant motion. Like, yeah. <laughs> the little pony stuff. I'm obsessed with. John. Yeah. <laughs> no. That song was so sweet. Yeah. Being so fun. Yeah, things so far, perfection, and a baby is in store. Some get all, some nothing, but everyone wants more. Baby in the photo. Oh, ah, Karen's cardigan okay. sweater means like. Mama, She's mama. Yeah. <laughs> that rock and roll is fading. Yeah. <laughs> My little girl. I love those little light bulbs on the on the um, cabaret tables on the on the Me car too. Cool. Yeah, I agree. There's no one better than you. Tend the bar in all the right places. Hippest parties, social pages. I love. It is true. Seeing the bar so much, all I do, I want is to like have a scotch right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. Wait and see. I'm better here alone. Don't need no one beside me. These days they are my own. No distractions to divide me. And I will conquer this damn city. Didn't I make you guys all do like um, like a pre-show too, like where like you all kind of came out one by one slowly before the show started? Yes. I'm such an asshole. That's so mean. No, it was great. It was great. We loved it. Okay. It was great. It set that shit up. Yeah. He didn't break my heart. Oh, I'm bored. I'm thinking crazy thoughts. I love my family. Her Tom owned that bar, King's Club. I get upstairs, stop, think again. Get online, find the number, and hello, Tom. One quick drink. And then one more hearts beat too fast to She's got Kevin's holding three three drumsticks at once. That's great. Oh, he had all sorts of stunts going on back there. Man. He touched her knee. This is an action packed 90 minutes. Like you just don't have a second to breathe. Truth. Don't say that you love me cause I, Do you guys remember the show? There was a performance where one of the audience members got a little too into it and would get up and dance in their place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Will, in the middle of a song, actually escorted her out. 
Okay, that I forgot. But like kind of like danced her out and like walked her out into the lobby because it was just around the end of a song. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's almost morning. I'm trying this again. If you're awake, we could talk or maybe kiss and then I could call in and take off time for me and you we could stay in bed all day just like we used to do everyone can sympathize we want the moon and the sun. it all looks so good sometimes when i like re-watch like footage of past shows i'm like <gasps> what did i do that sounds fun. but this one i'm like i I, I I sign off on it all. Yeah, man. I'm into it. Uh, harmonies, harmonies, harmonies. <laughs> this, is the, this is the goodness. All of the intricacy of that, like when like you and and Will kind of step as they step towards each other. I mean, like that was just so satisfying to watch. Yeah, man. Everything like was calibrated off of everything else that was going on. Yeah. That life is not you. I'm right here for you. You love me. Let me be. I tried you twice. School tried to. Frankie's sick. Where are you? Answer me. Answer me. You belong to me. Like a murder ballad is a like a kind of a subgenre of music that uh, describes a like a grisly, a grisly crime, obviously a murder and its aftermath. And uh, so what I thought was so exciting was, um, like in like in a horror movie, you just like you have to um, accrue tension and, uh, and and unease through the entirety of the story without letting up. And I think watching this. Back, it was exciting to see how, as it must have felt as an audience member, you never, you never got a break from feeling like, oh my gosh, because because you never knew what was going to happen. Things were happening all around you. You were late a lot of the time, so you never got like that sort of ease of a break of like I can just sort of sit there and watch it. You were sort of complicit the whole time as an audience member, which I think was was really useful for the the, the genre that we were that we were uh, inside of so th i thought that was like kind of exciting because i to watch the audience that way on the bar king's club come on down i can't believe my sarah lives uptown she used to be so i shouldn't say we have to go let frankie play and even switching from the or the transition from the uptown production to the downtown production, just how different the show felt. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the downtown production, but I felt like with the uptown, everything felt like it was bursting at the seams. Yeah, there was more of an ability to kind of calibrate to that proximity with the entire audience. That's right. That's exactly right. I feel like when we went downtown, we had to kind of supersize it a little bit to fill that massive space, which doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Right. It was a great space, though, but yeah, it's almost like the uptown production felt like the downtown production. Inside you when you forgot Frankie yesterday. Clubs and diamonds, spades and hearts can't choose our roles, just play. Here's the ground and here's your spade. Tend to garden, dig a grave. You belong to me.
my God, that is crazy. It's so good. It's so, and look at that. Like, that is amazing that you guys did that every freaking night and sang nonstop. It, I'm, it's crazy. Oh, so good. It's also like, you know, just the physical proximity of the audience to the actors and the actors to each other has a kind of resonance right now that I didn't even think about until right now. Like, yeah. I know how much. One of the things I think about the most when I think about Murder Ballad is that it was actually one of the first times I got to try things. And that because, in a way, we were working with. Um, writers and more specifically a composer who hadn't done a musical before and really came at it from a singer songwriter perspective. I feel like uh, we all got to collaborate in a way that you often don't on a musical and that when things were brought in, oftentimes, you know, we had to really workshop things and recreate things in, in the moment. And um, I also feel like our development of the show because it was entirely sung through um made it kind of inevitable that music would have to be a focus um because it was really what was not just you know doing what music often does in a book musical but it was telling the story from start to finish this part was so intense and rebecca you sang it so amazingly well yeah. Thank you. This I remember being nervous about it, but Justin made me feel better. Oh. the oatmeal's done. I get on the computer and pull up the New York Post. Unsolved murder at King's Club. And it all starts again. <gasps> oh. Such a good ending. <laughs> so good. It's so good. I mean, I used to get chills doing it. Thank you guys so much for watching with us. Uh, I hope um, that it was as pleasurable for you all as it definitely was for us to revisit this um, experience, this time in our lives. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>